Well, if you have your Bibles, and you should, and you should, this is a Bible believing, Bible preaching, Bible teaching church. We're going to continue our series on leveling up, going to the next level in our lives. And we're going to read from Philippians chapter 3. We're going to read verses 10 through 16. Philippians uh, chapter 3, verses 10 through 16. Hallelujah. Thank you. If you have it, say amen. Amen. And it reads, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the high calling, uh, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, Whereto we have already attained, let us walk in the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Hallelujah. Again, our theme for calendar year 2019 is level up. Uh, we want to take our lives to the next level. Amen? Amen. Uh, I'm taking my life. Uh, I'm taking my, my business. Uh, I want to take my my personal relationships. I want to take my physical health. I want to take my finances. I want to take my career. I want to take my education. I, I want to take every area and every aspect of my life to the next level. I want to level up. I'm not satisfied with where I find myself and, and I want to level up in all areas of my life. In my most humble of opinions, it's a, a foolish thing to have a lofty goal, uh, but have no clear path on how to reach that goal. I think it's foolish to have a dream, uh, but, but not have a way that that dream can become accomplished. Uh, Danny Bell Hall uh, wrote a song uh, uh, years ago, and, and one of the lines from that song says, Lord, let me have a dream without being a dreamer. You know, we all know individuals who have great dreams, but they have no way possible that they will ever fulfill them, that they will ever uh, uh, cause what was a dream to become a reality. And, and I think that it's necessary for us uh, not only to have a dream, not only to have a lofty goal, not only to, uh, to have a destination, but I think that it's, it's important that we also have a path uh, by which we will follow so that we can obtain that dream. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream this afternoon. And, and those of you all that are familiar with uh, that great civil rights icon know that it, it's, it's because of him and, and other civil rights leaders that, that, that much happened in the 60s and, and the 70s to bring about a racial uh, equality and, and, and justice and, and civil rights for uh, African Americans and for blacks. But Martin Luther King had a plan uh, by which he would achieve that goal. He had a dream but he also had a path that he was following so that that dream could become a reality. And he used very effectively nonviolent protests, uh, civil disobedience, and, and economic boycotts as a tool to grab the attention of a nation and, and cause them to, to, to really uh, come to bear upon the inequities that we found within uh, uh, the United States of America. And I thank God that, that King not only had a dream, but he had a pathway to see that dream realized. 
This morning, I refuse to be foolish. This morning, we refuse to be foolish. We, we refuse to set for ourselves goals, but not determine a path by which those goals can be achieved. I refuse to become a dreamer. You know, I refuse to become a daydreamer where well, all I do is dream, but I never ever uh, take the opportunity uh, to develop a pathway to make my dream a reality. I refuse to be that person. In, in light of all that, uh, we, we've set forth some principles for you, and, and those principles will, will help you to be able to reach your dreams and, and, and go to the next level in your life. And they're, they're there to help you level up, to level up. The, the first thing that we talked about, we, we talked about the, the necessity of making an assessment or an evaluation of where you find yourself right now. You know, it's impossible to go to the next level if you don't know what level you're on right now. And, and so before we can go to the next level, before we can level up, we must make a, a assessment and an evaluation of where we find uh, ourselves right now. We, we need to go back. Uh, to, we're not ready for that yet. Uh, we must uh, uh, find out where we are right now before we can move. Oh, no, you're right. You, you're, you're right. I was wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Rick. you were right. That next click, that next one, yes. Hallelujah. So, so the first step uh, in, in this, this desire to move or to take Areas of our lives to the next level is an honest assessment and, of evalu and an evaluation of where we find ourselves. The second uh, uh, principle that we talked about uh, last week or the week before last was the, the, the fact that we need to make a decision, to uh, make a decision. Literally, in, in uh, uh, it, the, the definition of a decision is a conclusion or resolution reach after consideration. In other words, after I have gone through the process of evaluation and assessment of where I find myself, after I have determined where I am in reference to where I want to be, we still have to make a conscious decision that, that I really want to change. I've got to make a conscious decision that I really want to change. And we talked about uh, some of the things that we need uh, uh, to make a good decision. Well, we talked about the fact that we need to identify our goal. Our goal, if we're going to make a good decision for change, our goal has to be clearly defined. I need to know where I'm going if I'm going to get there. Uh, it's important. Uh, we need to gather information for weighing our options. You know, there's more than one way to get from Chicago, or not this is Minneapolis, from Minneapolis, Minnesota to Evanston, Illinois. A couple of weeks ago when my wife and I traveled, you know, I'm accustomed to when you get to that break between 90 and 94, I'm accustomed to taking 90 through Milwaukee and then going down 90 into Chicago or 94 down into Chicago. But my GPS told me to go 90, 90 uh, and continue through Wisconsin and then pick up 294, no, yeah. 294 North. And take that over. I had no idea that I could get to Evanston going that way. But I, I trusted my GPS. And I kept saying, oh, I, I hope this is going to get us here on time. This looks like the long way. But boy, when we hit 294 going north, two stops later, we were off on that street. And <laughs> we rolled on in. Hallelujah. So it's important that we, we consider the, the consequences that we execute uh, our final decision and then afterwards we need to evaluate our decision and do some maintenance. Today, we want to explore the final principle necessary for taking our lives to the next level. The, the, the final principle for leveling up. The principle of identification which leads to addition and subtraction. All right. The principle of identification that leads to addition and subtraction. How many of y'all know how to add? One plus one? Four. All right. Four. All right. How many of y'all know how to subtract? Ten minus five? 
All right. So repeat this with me. Grab, grab your neighbor. Or just find a neighbor. I want you to look him in the eye. And repeat this with me. If I'm going to level up, I've got to identify things that I need to subtract from and add to my life. Oh, find another neighbor. Good to see my good friend, Michael John Miller. <laughs> Look him in the eye this morning and say, if I'm going to level up, I've got to identify things that I need to subtract from and add to my life. You, you got to find one more neighbor, one more neighbor, one more. You, you, you got to get this in your spirit. Amen. If you need to get out of your seat. If I'm going to level up, I've got to identify things that I need to subtract from and add to my life. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. In his book, uh, Scott Eblin, uh, his book, The Next Level, uh, uh, there he is, there's Scott right there. Uh, Scott Evelyn is a former um, CEO of a Fortune 500 company. And right now, uh, Scott is the executive director of a, a group called the Evelyn Group. And they're a, le a leadership development team that works specifically with uh, individuals who have moved from middle management uh, to executive places of leadership. And, and Scott Eblin, in his book, the, the Level Up, says this about, uh, about identifying and subtracting and adding to his life. L listen to what he says. He says, through my research, I have identified, that's that next button right there, Raquel. He said, through my research, I have identified nine sets of key behaviors and beliefs that executives need to pick up and let go of to succeed. Let me read that again. Through my research, I've identified nine sets of key behaviors and beliefs that executives need to pick up and let go of to succeed. This process of picking up and letting go, I've learned, is central to succeeding at the executive level. Powerful, isn't it? Now, listen, what he, he goes on to say, and we don't have this on the board, but he, he goes on to say this. He says, uh, it requires the courage and confidence to let go of some of the behavior and actions that don't fit at the next level of leadership. So, so if we're going to level up, if we're going to go to the next level in our lives, we must identify behaviors that we're willing to let go of and also identify behaviors that we're willing to take hold of so that we can move to the next level of leadership in our lives. Say amen, somebody. Now, now I'm in agreement that there's nothing new under the sun. That's what Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 says. Solomon stated that there's nothing new under the sun. This principle that Scott Eblin is espousing is not something new. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul in the passage that we read said almost the exact same thing about his spiritual life. He said that if I'm going to go to the next level, if I'm going to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, then I've got to forget those things which are behind. I've got to subtract them from my life. I've got to let them go and I've got to reach for I have to add to my life those things that will take me to the next level. I, I've got to do that. Now, now Scott Eblin in, in the book, the beginning of the book, he has a case study of a woman by the name of Amy. And Amy was a middle level uh, executive in a Fortune 500 manufacturing company. And she did a, a, a fantastic job on the two or three items that she had to manufacture. And as a result of, of uh, the money that she was bringing in because of her dutifulness uh, in that particular area, they uh, elevated her to vice president of development. 
Uh, so no longer was she just responsible for one or two items on the production line. Now she was responsible for all items that were being produced by this Fortune 500 company. And when she got to that level, she had to let go of some of the things that she did when she was uh, on uh, just a, a junior exec. And she had to take on some new things as the vice president of production for the entire company. L listen to what Evelyn said. Evelyn said for Amy uh, uh, to level up, she must develop a confidence in her presence, developing an assurance that she should be exactly where she is. Woo! You know, if we're going to level up, we have to accept the fact that where I want to be is where I need to be. Yes. Uh, we have to accept the fact that that, that, that level that I'm going for, uh, that, that step that I want to make, that move that I want to make, it's okay because that's where I need to be. And it's all right for me to be there. So, so that was the first thing that he identified. Now he's got nine characteristics, but he only identified three in her life. The second thing that he said is that it would be necessary for her to move from doing the hands-on work of product development to leading her team in the process. You see, when she was a middle-level executive over just a few items, she could have her hands in the process. Yeah. She could be there and help with the development. But when she moved up to the vice president of development for the entire company, she had to step back and allow those that were in middle management under her to do the work while she supervised them. She had to level up by changing the way they did. And then the final thing he said, that, uh, that she needed to adopt what he calls, and I love this, a big footprint view of her role versus a small footprint view, recognizing that her words and actions carry more impact and consequence than they used to. When you go to the next level, you have to watch how you act and you have to watch what you say because at the next level, what you say and what you do carries much more weight than when you were at the level that you came from. Hallelujah. So interesting that this guy who did this series of studies uh, found out that uh, to level up, you have to let some things go All right. and you have to take hold of some other things. Isn't that amazing? Well, Paul said it before he did. That's right. And I was a little disturbed as I was reading the book that he never gave the apostle Paul the credit. <laughs> Look at your text. Look at your text. In verses 13 and 14. I probably shouldn't have been upset. Because a lot of times I preach. And I don't give people credit either. You got it? Verse 13 and 14. Listen to what Paul says. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I've got a goal that I haven't reached. That's what he's saying. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I've got a level that I want to go to that I haven't gotten to yet. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Then he says, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. Now let's define what it means to, to subtract something. Uh, to, 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 to take something away. The word subtract, the, the act of subtracting is removing a part from the whole. The act of subtracting is removing a part from the whole. A second definition is the act of decreasing or reducing something. So, so what was Paul forgetting? What was Paul forgetting? Because he says, forgetting those things which are behind. If you go up to verse 4 in Philippians chapter 3, you see that Paul is forgetting of those things that he used to put confidence in for his personal righteousness. Paul says, I'm forgetting the fact that I, or I'm not putting stock in the fact that I was circumcised. He says, I'm forgetting the fact that I am a Jew from the tribe of Benjamin. See, these were all things that Paul uh, held in great esteem prior to his salvation. He counted on those things as part of, of bringing salvation to his life. But now that he's on the other side, he says, I don't put much stock in my circumcision. 
I don't put much stock in the fact that I am from the tribe of Benjamin. I don't put much stock, as he says, in the fact that I am a Hebrew of Hebrews. He says, I don't even put a lot of stock in the fact that I had great zeal that expressed itself in the persecution of the church. He says, I don't put a whole lot of stock in the fact that, that as far as the law was concerned, I was blameless. Listen to what Paul says. He says, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. So, so here's the question. What does Paul mean? When he says, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. Paul refused to live in the past. He refused. I'm not going to live in my past. I'm not going to live in my past successes. Nor am I going to live in my past failures. I, not that I can't allow my past failures and my past successes to instruct me. But I'm not going to live there. I'm not going to live in my past. If I want to go to the next level, if I want to level up in my life, I can't allow myself to live in the past. The past he properly appreciated, but his thoughts continued to dwell upon the future. Not as though I had already attained, either already perfect, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And then he says, and reaching forth. Unto those things were. So Paul, uh, for, for Paul, what it means is I'm not going to allow my past to impact my present. Listen to what Boyce, one of the New Testament commentators says. He says that Paul refused to let the things which happened in his past overshadow his present. That's powerful, isn't it? He, he let the past, both good and bad, uh, 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 he, he, he let the past, both good and bad, uh, in the past, constantly looking forward to the work God had for him in the future. Now, now, one of the things that's really interesting is that this is a recurring theme in Paul's writing. This idea of letting go and taking hold is, is not just something that he says one time. As a matter of fact, uh, in, in many of his prison epistles, he, he in, in a, uh, some form or shape, he is expressing this idea of forgetting uh, of, of subtracting, uh, of letting go, uh, of reaching forth, of adding, uh, uh, of, of uh, uh, adding to his life. Uh, all over, uh, he, he says, in Ephesians chapter 4, he, he puts it this way. He, he says, uh, 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 to put off your old self and put on the new self. In Colossians chapter 3, he put it this way. And I love this one. He says, mortify therefore your deeds which are upon the earth. Put to death your past. Wow. That's what mortify means. Uh, bring about the demise of your past in, in Colossians chapter 3. Now finally, in his epistle to the Galatians, he, 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 he puts it this way. He says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and they too are contrary one to the other, that you cannot do the things that you would. So, so this idea of letting go, and, and this idea of grabbing hold of something so that I can go to the next level is not new with Scott Eblen. Uh, this is something that the Apostle Paul talked about all the time. Yeah. So if I want to go to the next level, I've got to forget Subtract and let go of those things which are behind. Say amen, somebody. Amen. If I want to take my health to the next level, if I want to level up in my health, I must identify and subtract, let go, forget some things. Well, what, what do I need to forget? Well, I must avoid the overdependence on fast food. If I want to level up, if I want to go to the next level in my health, McDonald's can't be my favorite spot. I got to let it go. I got to let White Castles go. Come on now. I got to let it go. I got to let it go. Let it go. I, if I really want to level up in my health, I, I, I can't continue uh, to frequent the places that all they do is feed me grease, which clogs my arteries. It can have all types of negative consequences on my health. I got to let go. If I really want to go 
to the next level in my health, I have to avoid being sedentary. That's right. You know what that means? It means I got to avoid sitting down all the time. You know, one of the, 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 the things that I don't like about pastoring is all the sitting I do. You know, I'm sitting and I'm reading. I'm sitting and I'm typing my sermon. I'm sitting and I'm researching online. A whole lot of sitting. I'm sitting and I'm counseling. I'm, I'm always sitting. I'm always sitting. And you know, when you, when you develop, especially at, at my age, 35, yeah. uh, for the 27th time, yeah. when, when, you, when you develop that sedentary type of life, if you're not careful, Come on. Come on. it affects you. Well. You know, you got to get up and move around. Matter of fact, I, I was telling my wife today, I need to buy one of those desks that make me stand. You know, the ones that, that elevate. I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy one of those. I'm going to put it on that desk in there. I'm going to sit for a while, then I'm going to stand up for a while. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so if I want to move to the next level in my health, I've got to do those things. I, I've got to let go of my apprehension of visiting the doctor. I don't know about all of you all, but I don't like to go to the doctor. I haven't been to the doctor in probably two years. I, I miss my 10-year colonoscopy. Ooh. I, I got to go in. I got to go. I got to go. Gotta in. do it. You know? Amen. Next week. <laughs> Next week. Next week. Oh, this week. Too cold this week. Too, too cold. <laughs> Can't handle my digging around in my cold when it's cold. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that you have to do, change some things. If you want to go to the next level in any area of your life, if you want to go to the next level in your relationships, your relationships, you must avoid not communicating if you want to go to the next level. You can't play the silent treatment. I, I used to play that real well. I, you know, my, we get into a, a tiff and I, I saw that I was losing the tiff. I said, I know how I can you know, sway the balance and get this back in my favor, I'm going to go silent. <laughs> and I just sit there. You don't have a response? I said, no. <laughs> well, if I want to take my relationship to the next level, I've got to talk to my wife. I've got to communicate with my children. I have to spend time uh, communicating with my staff. If, if I, so I've got to avoid not communicating. I've got to avoid being easily offended. Yeah. Uh, I got thin skin when it comes to my wife. You know, people out here, y'all can tell me anything. It just ro roll right off. But when my wife tell me something, and I immediately get offended. Oh. <laughs> Immediate offense. I've got to stop being thin skinned. If I want to go to the next level of my relationship, I must avoid not trusting the person that I'm in relationship with. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. Uh, <laughs> just told on myself, did I? Come on now. <laughs> We've been married all these years. I'm glad she puts up with me. If I were to go to the next level of my finances, I've got to avoid continually adding revolving debt you got to, say it, Amen. to my portfolio or whatever you call it. Right. Well, if you got them credit cards, take them out and cut them up. <laughs> they are no good. Keep one and pay it off every month. I've got, I've got, oh, not that one. <laughs> I got American Express. Don't leave home without it. But you know when I use this, I pay it off at the end of the month. That's right. Now these other ones in here that I got, I'm not going to tell you what else I got. I need to let them go. I, need, I really need to call the company, cancel the card, and cut the card up. Because that's the only way I won't use them. As long as they're in my pocket, I get into a crunch. And I don't want to put it on American Express because I know I won't have the money at the end of the month. Oh, MasterCard starts talking to me. <laughs> Visa starts talking to me, saying, come on, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Say, yeah, I can do it, but if I do, it's at 15%. 21%. Ew. 
they, they charging big money for you to get money to do what you need to do. Boy, I am going long here. <laughs> As a new believer in Christ, I, I stumbled upon Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 uh, through 32. Uh, you know what? I'm going to leave that. Let's go to the next one. Uh, so so we, we, we talked about the necessity of forgetting, uh, identifying things that I need to leave behind, let, let go of. The, the, the uh, second thing here is uh, addition, identifying things that I need to bring into my life as I go forward. Again, the text says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Now, what, what does addition mean? Addition is the act of adding to. The act of adding to, all right? Adding to a part of the whole. A uh, second definition is the act of increasing or enlarging something. So, now what was the Apostle Paul talking about in, in Philippians when he brings this up? In our text this morning, Paul speaks in general but not in specifics. He says, uh, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. I'm letting them go. He says, but I'm also reaching forward to those things which are before. I press toward the bar. He's not specific in this particular passage of scripture of the things that he's uh, uh, reaching forward to. But in other passages where he's discussing the same thing, he gets a little bit more specific. In Ephesians 4, he says, he says, the, he says, I'm going after the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Mm. So, so I'm, I'm going after the new man. You know, there's a dynamic that's taking place in all of our lives that are believers. I, I have this new nature uh, that has been redeemed and quickened by a relationship with Christ. But I still have this old Adamic nature with me. My old nature. And, and, and Paul here is saying, I'm, I'm letting go of my old nature. I'm not allowing it to have the influence and the presence in my life. And I'm reaching forth and allowing the new nature to dominate. You know, that happens. That happens. And every uh, decision that you have to make around a conscious area of sin, there's a battle between our new nature and our old Adamic nature. Our new nature quickens us and tells us to do the right thing. Might even quote a scripture to you while you're sitting there. You know, it's like the little uh, good angel sitting on your right shoulder. You know, don't do that. But our old Adamic nature appeals to our flesh. Our old way of living. And, and, and sometimes the appeal is so strong that we go down that path. In Galatians, he even gets more specific. He says, listen to, listen to what he tells us we should add to our new nature. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And then he says, against such there is no law. So if, if I want to move to the next level in my spiritual life, you know, then I have to not listen to my old Adamic nature and I've got to begin listening to my reborn spirit. Yeah. That's what Paul meant when he says, if I walk in the spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh that we cannot do the things that we would. So, 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 what, is, what does Paul mean? You see, the things that I need, need to let go of are the outgrowth of my old nature, my Adamic nature, my, my unredeemed self, my fleshly nature. But, but the things which we are, uh, uh, that, that we are to put on are the natural by, byproducts of our redeemed nature. Y'all following me this morning? All right, you following me? That, that's why Paul says we need to walk in the Spirit need to walk in the spirit. So if I want to level up and go to the next level in my health, not only do I need to let some things go, but I have to take some things on. If I want to level up, I need to change my diet. I need to change my diet. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Mike said, hallelujah. <laughs> Not like you eat with me that much, but all right. <laughs> I need to change my diet. I, I need to become more active. We've got a workout room in our basement that I look in every once in a while. And I see the treadmill. I see the elliptical. I see the weight machine. I said, that was a good purchase. And then I closed the door. If I want to level up in my health, I need to go into the room. Become one with the treadmill. Become one with the elliptical. I need to lift the weights. That's right. If I want to level up in my health. <laughs> if I want to level up in my health, I need to see the doctor at least once a year for a physical. Say amen, somebody. Amen. If I want to level up in my relationship, I need to over-communicate. My wife's love language is communication. My love language is, what do you call it? What's my? Acts of service. Acts of service. So I'm always running around doing things for her. When what she really wants is for me to sit down and talk to her. <laughs> if I want to, to level up in my relationship with my wife, then I need to sit down and talk. Now, it's not, not that I don't sit down and talk. I do talk. We do talk. We have wonderful conversations. But <laughs> it's, it's sometimes for me, it's not that. How many minutes is it? Sometimes you have trouble talking. Let me see your hands. If you're a man, and you have trouble talking. I don't. Just listen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Did y'all hear that? She said, we're not asking for talk. We just want you to listen. <laughs> but that's not true. Because I'll listen to my wife, and then she says, what? No response? <laughs> Said, I'm going to use that on her now. She said, all you want me to do is listen, all right? I'm, I'm going to listen. Oh, I got you now. Got you. If I want to take my relationship to the next level, I, I can't wear my feelings on my sleeves. Can't be so easily offended. I have to recognize that my wife has my best interests at heart. And even when she tells me something that may hurt my feelings, she's not doing it to hurt my feelings. She's doing it so that I can level up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. My wife is my biggest proponent yeah. at taking me to the next level. Yeah, that's why she nagged, I'm, that's why she communicated with me. I, I'm sorry. That was a, that was a Freudian slip. <laughs> that's why she, she, uh, has been communicating with me for such a long time about me going to school. Yeah. She wants me to level up. Yeah. She wants me to level up. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to level up. Do it. Hallelujah. <laughs> if I want to level up in my finances, if you don't have a budget, you are never going to level up. I mean, practical stuff. If you don't have a budget and you don't have a process for debt retirement, you'll never level up. You just continue in debt. Uh, you, you must live, learn to live. And this is, I heard this not too, maybe a couple of years ago. You know, because we always say, I need to live within my means. No. You need to learn to live within your needs. Uh, most of us all live beyond what we bring in. That's why at the end of the month, we have more month or more bills than we have money. Because we've, we've, we've learned to live according to our wants instead of our needs. You know, we really need so much less than what we really have. Yeah, yeah. We got a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of stuff. And we need to get rid of some of that stuff. We need to pack it up, yeah. put it in bags, and take it out of the house. Right. Say amen, somebody. Yeah. Say amen, Dr. No. Yeah. Say amen. No. <laughs> Say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't need three Christmas trees. <laughs> All right, let me stop. I'm just meddling. I am about to get in trouble. So we need to level up. We need to level up. I'm, one more thing and I'm going to finish. In, in Ephesians chapter 4, this was so instructive in my life. As, as, as a new Christian, I was reading this and it spoke deeply to me about what I needed to let go 
and what I needed to take on. In, in Ephesians chapter 4, it says uh, that we should speak the truth in love. Verse 25. I need to let go of lying and I need to speak the truth. All right. It says, uh, be angry and sin not, uh -huh. and let not the sun go down upon your wrath, yeah. and don't give place to the devil. Right. Well, what does that mean? It means I need to let go of anger, and I need to control my emotions. Yeah. It goes on to say, it says, and let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him work with his hands that which is good, so that he might minister grace to those who are in need. Well, what did that mean? It mean I needed to stop stealing. I used to steal before I got saved. I'd go into the store with that big army coat on with the deep pockets and I would fill it up with candy. <laughs> I wasn't even stealing anything that was worthwhile. Yeah, go to jail over some candy. But back then, in, in the neighborhood I grew up, I could have got shot. Right. <laughs> for stealing some candy. But, but I steal no more, but rather work with your hands that which is good. Uh, it, it, it says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it might minister grace unto the hearers. Yeah. I need to watch what I say. Yeah. I really do. You need to watch what you say. Your communication should speak life to people and not death. Uh, your communication should encourage and uplift, not bring down and destroy. Then he goes on. He goes on to say, he said, and don't grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you are sealed until the day of redemption. You know, every time you choose to sin, when the Holy Spirit is quickening you and telling you not to, you're grieving him. And let, then he ends like, like this, and I love this, verse 31 and 32. And you can look at these at home. He said, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander with every form of malice, general. And this is what we need to do, verse 32. But be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as in Christ, just as in Christ, God forgave you. So how many of y'all want to level up? Let me see your hands if you want to level up in any area of your life. Any area. If we want to level up, there's three things we need to do. We need to make an assessment and an evaluation of where we are in reference to where we want to be. After making that assessment and evaluation, then we need to make the final decision that change is what I really want. And then, once we've made that decision and we've begun the, 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 the practice of carving out a clear path to the next level, we must identify things in our life that we need to subtract, take away, and get rid of, and things in our lives that we need to add to so that we can take our lives to the next level. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Lord God, then, Lord, you, you want more than we want uh, to see us level up, to take our lives uh, to the next level in you. Lord, help us, Lord, to uh, put in the work so that we can level up. Lord God, help us to put in the work so that we can uh, take our lives whatever aspect of our lives to the next level in you. Lord, help us to do a careful assessment and an evaluation of where we are in reference to where I want to be. Help us after that painstaking process, Lord God, to make a decision for change. Then help us to identify things we need to let go of and things we need to reach so that we can attain the next level in every area and every aspect of our lives. Father, we ask it in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. And let everyone say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah.